News in the world of Nightingale. Let's go. Some of us were fortunate enough to be able to have a little chat with the devs of Nightingale to talk about what they've been working on, what they're working on now, and what's coming up. So I just want to pop through the highlights of the insight that we were able to get from these guys. They talked about how obviously since their launch into early access, they've been primarily focused on getting things fixed as far as issues that came up and then looking into quality of life issues that players wanted things to be a little bit different. And now they're looking to the future and what they want to add soon as well. One of the things that is often requested is, of course, a creative mode. And they said that they definitely do want to do a creative mode. It's a high priority for them as well. But they haven't been able to do an update yet for that because they've been having to focus on the fixes first. Another thing that's highly requested is to increase the build limits. And they definitely want that done before creative mode because once you get into creative mode, obviously you're going to want higher build limits. One of their largest focuses right now has been having a lot of time going into making an offline mode. This was one of the biggest criticisms of Nightingale when it hit EA. And they've heard that loud and clear and have a lot of resources to getting this ready to go. The offline mode I'm thinking is going to get here first. At least before changing the build limits. Because they did say that that will take a little bit longer. Another thing that was discussed was in the type of updates that we're going to be getting. We've been getting, you know, some kind of smaller trickle updates. And is it their plan to continue doing it that way and having, you know, a little update for creative, although that would be pretty big, a little update for this, a little update for that, or are they going to start clumping them together into bigger updates? And they said that overall they favor doing larger updates, but... That's going to be a little bit in the future because first they have to get done with all of the little fixes that they had to get finished from the issues that came up with launch. But once they get past all these little fixes and quality of life stuff and creative mode, then when they're looking at adding in new biomes and new sets of armor and new vaults, they're more interested in a lot of that stuff coming together all at once and big massive updates. There's been some continued concerns in the community about the weapons that got created with those bugged ingots and whether anything was going to be done about that. And the short answer is yes. They still plan on doing something about that. They're seeing cases, you know, where a boss gets one shot in a vault and that's not really fun for the people playing around and they don't want people getting chased through vaults. And so they are looking into that. If it doesn't end up being fixed in this next crafting update, then they're going to have to take a targeted focus just to that. Speaking of adjustments, they talked about a lot of different ways that they're looking at making adjustments and rebalancing and going back to early game as well and making, making changes there. There are going to be several updates for crafting, for augment progression, and for making things easier to understand. It might help to take some workbenches and things out early on so that it's not as overwhelming for new players trying to figure out the whole system. They want these progression changes that they're adding in to give more support and to increase exploration of the worlds on the way to the watch. Part of how they're going to do that is continuing to add more quests along the way. There's going to be new NPCs added along the way. And those are going to be added in the early game to help people with their goals and with understanding and tweaking the current quests that are in the game as well. Because kind of part of what they found was that they need to, quote, move fun and fantasy forward. Like it's taking people too long to get to that fun phase and so that's why some people were checking out early. Another part of engaging more or re-engaging players that have taken a break from the game that they're focused on is increasing diversity in the different realms. Like for example if you go to three different forest realms as your major card a lot of times especially early game 
they all kind of start feeling very the same. So they're looking at ways to make those each feel more unique. Like when you go to a gloom realm, it definitely has a different feel. And so they're looking at how they can do that with some of the earlier realms. And maybe some ways that they can also use minor cards thrown in there to have more specific effects that give you a more unique feel in the different realms. They want to add in more puzzles and encounters. They have gobs and gobs of those lined up that they'll be rolling out. Also, the way that the bound spawn and changes in combat is gonna be coming in the next update. And so those kinds of interruptions will not be as predictable as they are now. Things that might be a little bit farther out than the next update as well has to do with being able to color or recolor things. This is gonna include being able to use dyes to change the color of your clothes, paint to change the walls in your house. Yes, that is something that they wanna do and it will be coming to the game, but it won't be in this next update that's coming. There's also rebalancing in food complexity and timing, and that will probably be in the update after this one. I did ask whether any of these upcoming updates or whether currently the issue is fixed where NPCs keep chucking all of your good wood into the fire and the walls. That one I asked as a chat question. The response was maybe. So I don't know exactly where that stands. I guess I'll need to find out. That is one of the primary pet peeves for me of why I took a little break from Nightingale and I'm waiting for a good update to go back and give it another shot. I've not given up on Nightingale, but I am in this category of people that they're talking about that had some concerns about the game, had some irritations with the game. And although I'm still very hopeful and I love the style and I love the concept, I had to take a break from it and do some other things. But of course, I'm still keeping an eye on everything. So maybe this next one will be the one that pulls me back in. You know, Scarbs kind of did an overview of updates that they were going through in phases and that first after early access they had to deal with fixes and now we've moved more into quality of life and next we'll be moving back into more new content again. And Erin thinks that hopefully after the next after the next couple updates they'll be able to focus on the new big exciting content like biomes and such starting in May. Fingers crossed everybody that's coming up soon to be focused on that kind of work. When is the next update? Basically, it sounds like it's coming in two weeks and it's gonna be a significant size. This is not gonna be like all new biomes and everything, don't get that excited. But all of the different kinds of things that I've been talking about and rebalancing and quests and NPCs and changes in the storyline, sounds like a lot of exciting stuff coming. And I'll keep keeping my eye on it all. Make sure and like if you found this information helpful. Until next time, happy gaming.